So everybody's here, so I'm sure we can start a little bit early, but uh, we'll, yeah, we'll yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. Good, good. Um, as I've done before, it's also good to see so many of you here again. Um, what I've done is to ask if there's anything you want me to start with from what you've experienced in the previous workshops. And I'll do that today before I go on to um, explain a little bit about today. Uh, also tomorrow or Friday. Um, I've also got to show you the emails that a number of you have sent to me with your action plans. Um, and I'm hoping to encourage you to continue to do that through the day because it's really good to see so many of you linked to the internet so we can communicate through the emails as well during the day. It helps me to understand what you're thinking and what you're doing. But let me just pause and just ask you, is there anything that you're feeling you'd like me to uh, either clarify or take up as an idea from the previous workshops? Anything that you're feeling you want me to develop as an idea? Anything at all? Okay, now why this is important to me is that by Friday, I'd like to develop the day from your own questions and concerns. Because I've been setting the curriculum uh, for these workshops. And by Friday, we really should have got the curriculum coming from you and responding together about what really matters to you. So I'm hoping that uh, over the next couple of days, you will email me with suggestions, you will focus on what it is that you feel you need so that by Friday, we can construct the curriculum together, but based on the needs that you have. Now, what I'm going to do um, this morning, and certainly before our first break, about 10 or 15, is to look at some of the um, action plans that you've actually sent to me. And I want to encourage those that have yet to email me to send me their action plans at jack at actionresearch.net. Okay, so don't hesitate to send them at any time of the workshop. They will come through to my emails and then we can actually have a look. And this is live at the moment, so emails are coming through. Some that I don't need to see, I can just delete them. But others contain your action plans. This one here is from an action researcher in Colombia who's just written to me, he's called Camilio, and Camilio is just uh, starting his research in living theory in Colombia. And we met in San Francisco a few weeks ago, um, and he's very keen to develop his own living theory. But the others, you can see here, and please forgive me with my pronunciations, but do correct me, but isn't that not Ali? Not Ali, is that right? Not um, not bad, thank you. Now, okay, why this helps me is that until you sent me your email, I wasn't sure who you were, you see? Now, your emails can help me to say, ah, I now know <laughs> who you are. Um, I'll show you in a few minutes where uh, the Irish uh, tutors have photographs of their students with their names and their written work so they can actually identify who the person is as quickly as possible. So this is really helpful that you've actually sent to me your email. Um, you can just see um, the people that have actually already sent to me. Is that Kassem? Yeah, Kassem. It's great. Now here, you can appreciate that I would not be able to read this. <laughs> Let me just see. So that, is that patch on me? Patch? Yes. I've got that. That's really good. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do in a few minutes is I'm going to bring up the uh, action plan that I'd like us to focus on as critical friends, because by helping one person, 
you will find yourself learning in a way that can help you to improve yours. And I want to just show you something at the moment in terms of how you can access the action plan that I put up last night from on my web page. So if you go into the actionresearch.net and then on the right hand side go down the what's new section you have to go a long way down the what's new section till you come to this point about the international action research CPD project. So can you go down to this the virtual learning space for living values improving practice cooperative it says developing an international action research continuing professional development project. If you will click on that go to the bottom of the left hand column you've got Chatri's action plan because Chatri sent to me his planner yesterday, I just added it to the Spanglefish website. Could I ask, has anybody yet got it? It takes um, sometimes two days for the Spanglefish sites to be activated. Has anybody had an email back yet? Yes? Uh, oh, oh, good. Good. So you, you've actually got that email. Hopefully you've activated and we can now just start to put your own writings on your own web page. Now, what I just want to check with you is how many of you can now access this piece of writing from Chartree? Can I just check? Could you put your hands up? Let me do it the other way because a number of you can access, I can see. How many at the moment can't access? As I'm in this room, I, because I want everybody to have access to reading through now the action plan. Because you can focus now on Chattery's writing on his action planner as a critical friend trying to respond to Chattery's action planner in order to try to improve it. And through our responses as critical friends, I think we will be able to say to Chattery, look, we think this is how you can strengthen your action planner. And as you're doing that, I believe that you will also see how you can improve your own. But can I just check uh, if there isn't anybody who can't have their own computer or read someone else's so that you can now just concentrate for the next five or ten minutes on reading the action planner, Chattery's action planner, and all the time thinking what would you advise Chattery to do as a critical friend to try to improve this plan. Okay? Is that, is, have you understood what I... Yes? You could. Okay. So, down here, right up down to the... Anybody else? Okay. Yes. Are you okay. Go on this new section. Go down to that to virtual learning section. Yeah. Anybody else?
Two more minutes, just to finish. So read as quickly as you can. Okay, you can have a little more time later to read the planner. But what I'd like you to do is just talk, either in your pairs or groups, and just see if you can actually see anywhere at all that Shatri might improve his action planner. Okay, and then We'll come back together, and I'll go through it with you, and I'll give you my own responses to make some suggestions. And then I'd like you to look back over your action planner, share it with someone else to see what you might then improve in your action planner. Because reading someone else's and commenting on it as a critical friend almost always helps you to see how to improve your own. So could you now just, as I say, just talk in your pairs or groups and think of Shatri's action planner, what he's done so far, but how would you respond to help him improve this plan? Okay? And I'll just give you five to ten minutes to 
think about improvements in Chantry's plan. Okay. Well, please do, as I say, share it either in twos or threes or your groups. Responses so far, and whether any of the groups or anyone has actually got some suggestions about how Chattery's action plan might be improved. Any suggestions at all? Or if you'd just like to give a response to say, you know, you think it's very clear and it's very informative, whatever it is that you're responding to, um, it would be good to know what you're feeling about this at the moment. And it's immediate responses. Any any responses at all? Yeah. Shall we try and get this out? Let's just see the uh, speaker carry it. Yeah. This this is working. This one is working. Okay. Yeah. Um. Actually, all of us agree at this point that we are skeptical in terms of how successful a journal, student's journal, will be in this case. Not because it's not good, just because the major Thai students that would not know how to write a journal. And they may, actually it's my better experience that it's not a journal, but I had, I taught a class, and by the end of my lecture, I had my students write, basically I had one keyword up on the slide that says take home point. So I wanted to, you know, spend two minutes write anything, the impression, what they learned from today, or what they still want to know more, or anything that comes to their mind. But what they were doing was actually copying the topics of my lecture onto the paper. And one of the one day paper but they spent ten minutes on. It. And I think that's one problem for kind students because we don't really know how to do it. So my other people might have suggested that maybe we need to start <coughs> teaching students to do this from when they were a kid and just build upon that from there. Not just as a journal, but maybe as a, an exit point in terms of you know, a couple of minutes, anything, but we need to put structures into the question. You can't just say, write whatever is in your mind but say something like, um, what did you learn today? Or what did you want to learn more about what we talked about today? Or something like that. But that's not really what to do with what he wanted to do, but I'm sort of questioning if he brought this in to his class for his thesis project. I wonder if it would work to students who doesn't know how to write. Yes. No, I get it. You know that? It's exactly the response of a good critical friend. It is to take something, uh, and you don't take it for granted. The Chattery has written here, you see, um, I will also collect the student teacher's journals. Uh, I believe that reflection is a key idea. I will also bring these reflections to discuss with my colleagues. Now, the success of that rests upon what you picked out as an issue. And it is an issue not just in Thailand. It is an issue certainly in each of the countries I visited where the action researcher assumes that the students will be able to write reflective journals. And it's not easy. That is why it is very helpful to draw Chattery's attention to this now because it may be that the students need some guidance, as you're saying, about the structure to actually be able to focus on their own learning. And it will take time to develop that. So, again, an excellent suggestion from a critical French. And when you look at your own action plans, think how important it is to get the students' responses to what you're doing but know that this will not be easy. 
that you will all have, I think, experience of the students, and some of you have told me, actually are passive. They, they actually just give the teacher back what the teacher has said with little creativity or inquiry. And this takes a lot of, quite a lot of time and persuasion before the students recognize that this is what is being expected. So that, again, is really excellent as a response which you could all build into your own actual planners when it comes to looking at the data you need to make a judgment about effectiveness. You will need at some point to get responses from your students to show the nature of the learning that is going on. I'll just make one point before I ask anybody else, but again, you'll see this is a really excellent point of Chattery's towards the end, uh, where Chattery is saying that uh, colleagues will give me feedback and suggestions about my teaching practice. And this really is an excellent ending about his intention to use that feedback to design his next class learning activities, which will be built from the reflections and suggestions. And then I will implement to see what happens. I will do the same way as I mentioned above. I will do this again as a cycle, week by week. Now, that is very ambitious, to think that you will be able to do this week by week. The amount of data that you will be collecting means you might suffer from what we call data overload. You will have so much. So it is important not to have too much that you cannot cope with. So it might be that you find this process of writing, sharing, it might be over two to three weeks, rather than every week, because that is an awful lot for you to take on. And then to share your reports with your colleagues. Now, what is excellent about this is that Chattery is determined to respond to the reflections of colleagues. Now, what is missing, I would suggest, and this is, again, not easy, but if all of you want to get inquiry learning going with your students, I think you will all need to show that you're making a response to your students. Now, if you're used to transmitting your knowledge, you often don't need to get the questions of your students. You just give the knowledge to them. With inquiry learning, you will need to respond to your students as they are actually questioning. And also, in terms of your teaching, what are they learning? Chattery has focused on reflective journeys. I love that idea, but it is not easy. Even the teachers that I work with for their master's degrees do not find it easy to produce reflective journeys. Now, Chattery is actually demonstrating his high capacity in this actual planner to reflect, to actually think critically and creatively. The difficulty is not to assume that your students can do the same. They will need a lot of help, as you were saying, to actually structure their reflections. And the only thing, as I say, Chaplin, that I, I see difficult to do, but really important, is to try to get some evidence that you are actually responding to your students' learning. Now, before I go on to just one other point I'd like to make about uh, Chattery's passion to help his students develop their understandings of chemistry, which is what I think Chattery is really concerned about, and he uses this idea of pedagogical content knowledge to help to improve his own teaching, but ultimately to get at the improvement in student learning. And it's the student learning in chemistry. So I want to return to this point later when I just ask, is there any more uh, are there more responses from you as critical friends that can help Chattery build improvements into his actual plan from what you've read so far? Is there anything else? Anybody? No? Is that? It's funny because as you were all talking, it was obvious you were really focusing 
on the action plan. Yes. Yeah, it's not I already told him personally because he says it just thanks to me. Um, I, I, I share my concern that um, about his role. Uh, he is an instructor in teaching and also evaluating, accessing as, uh, his student learning. But if he, he asks students to write a journal, so it's like to let him know that about his strengths and weaknesses. It's like his teaching performance. So I'm not quite sure whether the student that you said enough to be side forward on his instructor teaching. So my recommendation, and my suggestion to him is to, uh, in the first period, um, inform the student that he is now doing an action research, and uh, the aim, the, the prime aim of this is to improve his teaching to enhance the student learning and ask for uh, ask for student uh, operation. I really like that suggestion, but if I bring that idea of yours into this room at the moment. If the teachers or the instructors don't do it themselves, in other words, in this room now, if I say to you, I would like your feedback on my teaching, I'll guarantee I would have silence <laughs> from the majority of so one of the key issues in my action planning, as I've been thinking about what to do, is how to develop what you've just said, which is how do I encourage you to do exactly what you've said and actually bring your own ideas and criticisms and suggestions into this space. We call it the pedagogical space. So when you talk about your pedagogical content level, if you like, this is my pedagogical space. I have the same issue that you've just mentioned for Shakti. What was exciting me last night, and it may be useful to you, is that this is the first workshop where so many, as I say, are participants, actually can email me straight away. I can actually put your responses on this screen because my email can be live. So yesterday when I thought that you, some of you could email me your action planners, you did it. Now that was much more effective than asking you to come in front of the microphone and, and talk. So it's finding the best way of getting that feedback. In some schools, very few schools in England, all of the students have been given iPads. And the teachers are finding the same thing, that the communications have been eased, they have been greatly facilitated with the use of the technology. So today, to take your point, really into this group, so that you will do this for yourselves. If you don't really get that confidence and courage to do it for yourselves, I don't think your students will actually do it with you. So I want all of you at some point to make sure that you have emailed me. Either with um, quite a number have done this already and I was showing you in relation to the action plans. I'll put a few up in a minute. But I also want you to think of doing this. If you could send me an email, all of the people so far have put where they come from. So it, it helps me. I've got your name, I've got the institution, like the university or the IPST, wherever it is, or the Institute in the Legend of Technology. And this helps me to locate you, what it is you're doing, and actually relate to you as an individual. You know how important that is for your students. 
If you recognize your students and can name them and show that you value them, this has a big impact on their learning. So this technology, I think, can help us. Now, I want to just put a, one or two of the action plans that came through the emails yesterday. But I, I want everybody to try to have that courage or the confidence to email me with just something that they feel, for example, on Friday might be useful to them. So that I can construct the curriculum around the things that you believe are important to you. Because by Friday, I will have covered and brought to you what I can bring in terms of resources. But what is then exciting for me is that you can create your own curriculum by letting me know what it is that you need. So when you were saying there about reflective journals, we've had quite a bit of experience of trying to structure the reflective journals so that important information for the teacher is given by the students. It's the same with, I think, each of your issues. If you let me know through the email, I'll be able to create and show you me creating what we call a living curriculum. It is the curriculum coming with the student and the tutor, rather than what we call the given curriculum. The given curriculum is just what is imposed from outside. And we all have to meet the criteria of a given curriculum, whether it's in our science, it's in our uh, philosophy, it could be in our physics, our chemistry, our biology. We are all given curriculum to teach. The living curriculum is the one that you create in relation to that given curriculum. So I want you to actually send me your suggestions so that you can see what it is to create a living curriculum with a teacher or tutor. Because I think increasingly, if you want inquiry learning, you're going to have to do that with quite a number of your students. But could I just ask, before I just go through one or two more of the action plans, is there anything else that you feel you would like to respond to? And I know in this context, you're, it feels to be quite shy about some of you coming to the microphone. I think you're less shy about sending an email because I've got more emails than I have people coming to the microphone. But I like to give people that opportunity to speak in front of a group because it is a very important quality, and I think you will want your own students to develop that quality themselves. So is there anything else that you feel you would like to make the group aware of as you've been talking or thinking about this action plan? No? Yes? That is the so-called ongoing assessment. We don't uh, wait at the end of the lesson and assess our student learning through the way of thought. Teach. So, and that links, I think, to the formative assessment. That the idea that, uh, and I think chapter is already possibly built that into his action plan because that week by week process means the chapter is going to be evaluating, assessing um, the outcomes with his students and responding to them. And this is very important not to leave your assessment or we say evaluation to the end of the project. You build evaluation in all the way through so that you can see with your drafts your redraft, your next draft, the improvements that are taking place. You don't wait to the end before you produce a research report. This is a really crucial point. In fact, I'll just show you before I go on to the actual plans, where it was built into the Improving Learning Project. Could you just turn to, um, this is in the Improving Learning, and it's on that You've got this improving learning for number 14 years, it's this one. And it's the page after the front piece. Have 
picking up that, it's just got at the top of the page, content is introduction. It's got that cartoon at the front. Yeah, that's it, that's it. It's got the cartoon at the front, turn over one page. Okay, now. The last point about making sure that the assessment or evaluation is literally ongoing. Now, that last paragraph on the right, where I write that a central focus in the report is the process of self-evaluation. That's the last paragraph on the right, towards the bottom. Of the relationship between what the teacher intended to do and what they achieved in practice. And again, the teachers were assisted by videotapes of classroom practice, interview data, and their pupils' responses. And it says you'll see that improvements in learning occurred through the creative and critical powers of individual teachers and a high degree of cooperative activity, which you are actually very good at already. Your power to cooperate is already well developed. But that process of evaluation, of looking at the difference between your intention and what is actually occurring, needs to be continuously evaluated and assessed. And these ongoing processes mean you produce draft research reports, not just a final one. You put your draft report into colleagues, they will help you to strengthen it, so the next one can be seen to be an improvement. And this is important for the action research process. You are continuously evaluated, like we're now doing with our action plans. And you might already be seeing ways, from responding to Chattery's action planner, of improving your own in terms of this idea of the responses from your students and getting, like the reflective journals, but knowing you can't just tell students to produce reflective journals, You've got to actually show them how to structure them. You've got to spend some time helping them to understand what a reflective journal is. Now, if you look at your own action planner, you may, in fact, now want to modify it to include something of that. But I'll mention just one other thing about Chatteries before I go on just to look at one or two others and then give you time to improve your own action planner. The point that I just want to make is this. When I was studying for my own master's degree in psychology, I mentioned to you that I was also a head of a science department at a secondary school. So every day I was teaching uh, chemistry and physics because my first degree was what was called the joint honors in chemistry and physics. When I studied with the psychologists, my question that I was trying to answer was how do I improve my teaching but in relation to my pupils' understandings of science. So my dissertation was all about, it was called a preliminary investigation of the processes through which adolescents acquire scientific understanding. So my focus was on my pupils' scientific understanding. I was very influenced by uh, a Nobel Prize winner, a uh, scientist called uh, Peter Medouard, who focused on inquiry learning. He said that uh, what is great about scientists is their focus on questioning. They ask good quality questions. So my focus with my students in the classroom was to try to improve their scientific understanding with inquiry learning. The psychologists I was tutoring me were really pleased when I uh, suggested using a controlled experimental design because of my physical science background, using two theories of the day. One was called Piagetian cognitive stage theory, another was called uh, Gagne's theory of learning, another was called Bloom's taxonomy. Okay, so I actually developed tests because I was doing a, a special course on test construction. So I developed tests based on Piaget's theory and also Bloom's theory. Now it took me about six to eight months 
to see that I wasn't actually focusing on my pupils' scientific understanding in the classroom. What I was doing was testing the validity of Piaget's cognitive stage theory and also Bloom's taxonomy. Now, that is important if you look at what Chatter is doing with his pedagogical content knowledge. That if that becomes what we call the dominant concept, what Chattery will end up doing is testing the validity of pedagogical content knowledge, that idea. And he may lose connection, as I did for eight months, with what he really is interested in, which is improving the chemical understanding of his students. Now, I hope I'm making sense here, because with Chattery's action plan at the moment, one of the ways you could help Chattery to really improve this is to insist that there is a relationship between the pedagogical content knowledge, so Chattery's idea of pedagogical content knowledge, but that that is related to his students' understanding of the growth of their understanding of chemical and factual knowledge or theory. And there is always a danger if you're academic of losing the connection with the practice. Because, as academics, we often love other people's theories. We really enjoy, and I enjoy, theories of many different kinds. You know, I, I can talk about the Agenist cognitive stage theory, I can talk about Habermas with his critical theory of society. You know, and I actually love doing that. But in doing it, I've often lost contact with what it is that the teachers I'm supervising are focusing on, which is the understanding of their pupils. Now, I can sometimes use the theory, like Habermas with this critical theory of society. I can use that to sometimes focus on what I need to do to change the social context. Remember I said to you about we have a particular education minister in our country at the moment who is putting into place reforms about the teaching of history. That a lot of academic historians are saying this is a fundamental mistake because it's just getting our children to regurgitate factual information without developing historical understanding. Now Habermas's critical theory helps me to understand where I need to act. It isn't in my classroom, although I try to improve learning there. I need to act nationally in terms of policy if I am going to influence that part of the curriculum. So it isn't that I ignore the traditional theory, like the pedagogical content, but I do want to see with Chattery as the reports come through to us, that he's focusing on his students' understanding of chemistry and showing how his improved pedagogical content is actively influencing his students' scientific or chemical understanding. Now, could I just ask, could you just nod if you understand the significance of what I'm saying about? not losing the focus of your concern by completely engaging with a different a theory, a traditional theory. Always see that you've got to connect it to improvements in your students' understanding of the subject you're interested in. So this with Chattery's action plan, I would need to see not only Chattery's understanding of pedagogical content, but he has related that to improvements in his students' chemical understandings. Now just at the moment, the action planner hasn't got a focus on that developing the chemical understanding of the students. So I would need to see that as highlighted as a fundamental purpose of the inquiry, gathering data with the students about their developing chemical understanding which Chattery wants to improve his pedagogical content knowledge in the sense of how he is teaching it, 
but the focus, the purpose, is to improve the student scientific understanding. Now, I hope in all of your action plans, you can focus at some point on gathering that data, which will help you to understand if your students are developing their understanding of the subject that you're teaching. Now, I'll just show you at the moment just two or three action plans, and I was delighted. You know, many thanks for sending those through. It's so much um, easier, I think, for you to write in that way, to send them to me, than it is just coming to the microphone and talking in front of the group. So I'm hoping that you'll use this technology now to email me, not only with your action plans, but also with suggestions for Friday, where you're saying that you'd like more understanding in this area, an area that really matters to you. So I can then show that I will build a curriculum for Friday on what it is that you need. But today, I want to focus on strengthening your action planning. I then tomorrow, I want to actually move it to something which I think you're probably already very aware of. And that is to do with uh, the cultural um, we say the socio-cultural, socio-historical influences on your practice. So that you don't just put in your living theory uh, as an action planning process, you see that you and your students are being influenced by really important cultural pressures, socio-cultural, socio-historical. In Thailand, you will know these much better than I do. I will know mine in England better than yourselves. But you will know your context in Thailand, you will also know better than I do, the cultural influences on your values and your practice. And this is why I want you to learn how to frame, to give a frame, you say frame, this is to introduce your readers to your living theory so they can put you in context. And you are all working within the cultural influences of Thailand. You've also got really powerful social historical influences, which actually will help a reader to understand some of the constraints, some of the possibilities that allow your living theories to develop. So that is what I will want to focus on tomorrow. But today, I'm just trying to help you to strengthen that action planning process and get the emails coming through to me and I hope everybody will just send me an email, even if it's just with your name at university, so that you've actually just sent me an email so I can actually make that connection. What the Irish teachers have done uh, with Yvonne Grotti and Margaret Farron is also to send them a picture. So Margaret uh, has actually put all the pictures together with names, universities, so that the, the way in which we come to know the students is enhanced. So don't hesitate. If you've got a picture, you know, many have got phones with the capacity to take the image, just send it to me so that this helps me to identify who you are and where you're from. But now let me just turn. Dr. 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 Yeah. Now, 
Right. That I understood in terms of Chattery's focus. Now, what I was just responding to was an experience I had, which was very similar to this, which was, um, how do I improve my knowledge of Piagetian cognitive stage theory, and then with my students who are in the university, to improve my students' knowledge of Piaget's cognitive stage theory. Now, what I'm just pointing out here is that the purpose of doing this is to enable the pupils in the schools who are going to be working with the students to actually understand chemistry better. You know, the way you develop, and Shulman with that notion of pedagogical content knowledge, was to actually get better, literally, as a pedagogue. That you might be very good at chemistry, you might be a very good chemist, but that does not mean that you can actually help a student to develop their scientific understanding. And in fact, my chemistry uh, and my science got in the way of me becoming a very good science teacher. Because when I started, my language was at a much too higher level coming from the university that was appropriate for my pupils who were 11 to 18 in what we call the East End of London, which was quite a difficult area to teach in. So I needed to develop my pedagogical content knowledge with the purpose of helping those students in the school to improve their science. Now, let me just try and be clear about this, because if I understand Piaget, this doesn't mean that I will be a better teacher. The fact that I can talk to you about my pedagogical content knowledge doesn't actually mean that I can actually practice that in relation to you and me became a better educator. So this is all I'm focused on with chattering, not to lose that connection. But that is an important question. How do I improve my PCK in order to enhance my students' PCK? Okay. Now that trips off the tongue, and it appears to make really good sense. I'm just asking Chattery to bear, keep in mind this point that the purpose of developing the pedagogical content knowledge is so that the students or the pupils in the school actually become better scientists or better chemists. And all I'm saying is not to lose sight of that. But I, I, yeah? I, I got to buy okay. yeah. So it's mean that you have to collect data. It's not just only for the student teacher, but he has to collect data for the student that the student teacher teach them. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. That, that's, okay that, yeah. that is exactly it. That uh. Chattery could convince you all that he understands what Lee Shulman was talking about with pedagogical content. That doesn't mean that Chattery can help his students to, to, in practice to become better educators. Now, if this is a really important point because many of you have told me already that you can tell your students, and your students appear to learn from you, when they go into a classroom, they seem to go back to a, what we call a transmission mode. That they somehow don't seem to practice what it is that you feel they have learned with you. Now, the key point is to try to always focus on improving the learning. In other words, I can actually talk about my theory about learning, but that doesn't mean that I am a better educator. I've got to demonstrate, and the, sometimes the video can help me to see, am I making an appropriate response to Professor Van Diepen there? You know, because that was a really important point. We can go back to what Jackie said, and then I need to see whether or not my response was appropriate. But that relates it back to my practice. Do you, now, I know this is not an easy thing because it means shifting your perception of what is important. Because I, as academics, you've often been taught that it's the theory, the academic theory, which is the most important. As educational researchers, I'm not saying that the theory isn't important. I'm saying there is something that is actually more important, 
and that is your practical knowledge, enhancing your students' understanding. And it's that that I'm asking us to focus on with the actual plans. And I'll just go through one or two now before I give the opportunity um, after the break to strengthen your own actual plans. But if you just look at uh, the ones that have come through already, which as I say, I was really pleased with these. Um, now, can I just see, I've got um, Chong Di, Chong Di from Rangsi, right, Steve Hart. I've actually talked as I've gone around, but this is the first time that I've actually got that it's Chong Di, yeah? Chong, Chong Di. What is it? Chong Di. Chong. Chong Di. So if you use if I use the if I use the instead of the it will uh, a longer sound so I so I use the H Chong. 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 Yes. yes. You can see how difficult I'm still finding. You, the, you, 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 it's, the, the, the language, you are very sensitive to tone. Uh, in English, we don't change our meanings with the tone. And also, the, it's Rangzit University. Is that Rangzit? Now, do you see that I can now locate? Yeah, I can now locate you. You know, so I have your name, I now know your university, I've actually got the actual plan. And this is really important for community. But I don't know how many, before you see this actual plan, knew, and here, I'm going to get it wrong, and I'm sorry if, then, if I say Chong Di. Chong Di. I will practice. But what Chong Di is actually doing, until you see this and share it, you don't know what is going on with your colleagues in different universities. And that's why these electronic media We'll talk at about 3 o'clock uh, this afternoon when Marie Huxtable, who actually was very um, interested in getting the Spanglefish sites up and running, she actually did it with my students. So I think we've got problems, because a number have already set up your sites. Uh, Marie can help us with those problems. But let me just go through uh, Chong Li's action plan. Now, I think it's really important that, as I said, you come to know what each other is doing and we put it in the public domain. That means your spangle fish sites can be accessed by each person. Um, I asked uh, Professor Lantipa if I could have the e-list of everybody. Yeah. So I could make an e-list sharing with you all so that you could actually keep communications going if you wanted to. Okay, now look at the actual plan there. What do I want to improve? I'd like to improve the technique of learning science in my classroom. So again, great focus on the learning of science. And this means that if we were to go down to something that I said, look, I think you will need here. What data will I collect to enable me to judge my education efforts? Right, the test questions to give some problems, the examinations, and the valuation of my students back to them. That is where we've got to with this act.